These data were developed for Motorola in 1997 by Ohm Gandhi, who was then a professor of electrical engineering and president of the Bioelectromagnetic Society. Uh, he's, he lost his funding when he produced these studies that showed that children, if you scaled down the child brain from the adult brain, you got greater exposure. We have modeled now a six-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 34-year-old. If you look at the six-year-old, you'll see that the white area, right under the phone and the yellow-red, the hottest area, goes all the way from the cheek, all the way up into the eye, and all the way down into the top of the spinal column. If you look at the 11-year-old, you see it, it also still gets into the spinal column, but the area is a little bit less. And by the time you get to the 34-year-old, it doesn't get into the spinal column and it's not affecting the eye in as hot an area. All right. We are also doing modeling of iPads and modeling of Google Glass. So now I'll turn a little bit to the sperm experiments. And this is just a summary of some of the stuff Dr. Sharma will show you. This is showing you that if you take two test tubes of sperm from the same person, one test tube gets exposed to cell phone radiation, the other does not. You will see that in the top there, the exposed sperm in the top column die three times faster than the unexposed. Exposed to cell phone radiation, computer generated to mimic a cell phone in the National Laboratory of Australia's NIH, where they study these things, Sir John Aitken, who is a Cambridge University trained andrologist. He also showed motility, the ability of sperm to, to swim, is three times worse in the exposed, and DNA damage on the mitochondria of the sperm, which is the engine of the cell, is also almost four times greater when measured uh, in the standard laboratory tests that are used to measure these things. Now, I show you this, Dr. Sharma will show you other studies done on sperm, because I want to stress there's a lot of literature here. And think about young boys who are keeping phones in their pocket without any awareness of the fact that this can have a damaging effect. This is what we know from the Cleveland Clinic, from Ashok Agarwal, who is a colleague of Dr. Sharma. This was data they published in 2008. Men who kept the cell phone in their pocket had the lowest sperm count. Studies have been done with Wi-Fi on a laptop, uh, which the laptop was specially engineered so it didn't generate heat, because heat, of course, will kill sperm. We know this. And these laptops were, generated, were created so they were not creating heat, but they were creating the Wi-Fi signal, normal Wi-Fi signal from the antenna of the laptop. Most people have no idea where the antenna are on their laptops. In fact, Nowadays, laptops aren't called laptops anymore. They're called tablets, for the most part, because they belong on tables. Most of them are tested at 20 centimeters from an adult male body. Think about all these little children whose arms are not even 20 centimeters long using these iPads. I know that a lot of the audience here isn't technical, but for those who are, I wanted to explain that there are some theories of mechanisms that could be involved. And this was developed, again, with the Cleveland Clinic. And you see at the top, either a cell phone or toxic chemicals, either one can have functional or structural impacts. It can change the structure of DNA on the right, and that cause direct DNA break, so you're damaging the structure of it. Or it cannot damage the structure, but it can damage the function. So things like calcium <laughs> efflux, which is critical to membrane integrity, calcium efflux can be altered. Stress, stress proteins can be increased. Heat shock proteins can be increased. And all of those can have an effect on sperm metabolism and motility. And of course, the so-called testicular barrier is actually 100 times more sensitive than any other barrier on the human body. So anything that gets on the testis gets into the bloodstream. 